Welcome back to KC Talks EV and it's finally time to do the range test and available capacity test on the BYD Attic 3. First of all I just want to give a massive thank you to the organisers at the London to Brighton EV rally which you can have a look at here but also they managed to um, get an additional week on top of that for my testing purposes. So thank you so much the organisers at the London to Brighton EV rally. I'll definitely be there next year so make sure you go check out the previous year's video as well on top of that. So the test route today is going to be from Grimsby to Hull with a massive detour to Bradford. I have actually got this car down to a fairly low state of charge as well as a fairly high state of charge. Even though this vehicle is fairly new, hopefully it should give us a pretty um, representative result. Today's weather forecast is actually pretty good for this range test. It's 20 degrees Celsius, so almost optimum conditions. I will be using the air conditioning. I am also doing this range test slightly later in the day as well to avoid any traffic. But effectively, I'm going to set the cruise control to 70 miles an hour, probably put the uh, lane keep assist as well as the kind of the auto steer feature on should be absolutely fine. So without further ado, let's get started. One other thing I probably should mention actually before we start this range test is unfortunately, for some reason, and I did mention this in my impressions video, you cannot reset a trip computer that gives you the kilowatt hours per 100 miles or miles per kilowatt hour in a way that, you know, gives it for that trip. Um, it only gives it to me for the last 50 miles, as well as the total average since this car was made or manufactured. As a result, I'm going to give you a running commentary every 50 miles. We'll take all of those values, and then what we'll do is we'll average them out, and that should give us a fairly representative figure. If it doesn't, uh, please forgive me. Please, BYD, try and find a way of actually getting a more reasonable um, estimate for a journey. That would be really, really good. Okay, so we are 50 miles in. We've got an average speed of 65 miles per hour, uh, 0.8 hours total driving time, and we've got a past 50 miles of 30 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Okay, so I've rejoined the M62 again. So I've done 85.6 miles. I've averaged 28 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. There have been some areas where I've had to slow down a little bit because of the average speed. Average speed of 62 miles an hour. I'm gonna try and bring that back up to towards 65 miles an hour on the way back. Okay, so we just hit 100 miles. Now average speed of, so average speed of 62 miles per hour and we've averaged 25.1 kilowatt hours per 100 miles on that last 50 mile stretch. So I'm just going to reset the uh, 50 mile um, limit again. Okay, so we just ticked over the 150 mile mark as we come into Hull. The test is probably going to end any minute now. So we averaged 31.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles for that last 50 mile section and average speed of 60 miles an hour. So I'm just probably about to stop here and then we'll finish up the test. 
Okay, so in terms of the actual full range test data, we arrived back here with 12% state of charge. We did 150.4 miles, average speed of 60 miles an hour. And again, as I said, 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. I also convert them to watt hours per kilometer as well, uh, especially for our European friends. Now, when you look at this and when you then actually extrapolate everything from there, so 150.4 miles on 76% state of charge, you end up with a total available capacity of 56.5 kilowatt hours of available capacity. This is definitely lower than what I believe BYD quote. I believe the 60.4 is actually the usable capacity and this battery is slightly bigger than that. So realistically, it could be within the margin of error on top of this. It could also be the battery needs a bit of cooling. Um, you know, throughout the day, it has been definitely on the warm side of things. And during this test, again, it might have needed a bit of cooling. It might alternatively have had a little bit of heat loss as well. Finally, if you take the total available capacity of 56.5 kilowatt hours and you multiply that by 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, you end up with a 100% down to 0% theoretical range of 197.9 miles. This is definitely away from WLTP combined. Obviously, my range test tends to be, look in the comments below, fairly representative, but also actually a bit more um, difficult compared to the WLTP combined but you end up with 76.61% of that value, which is 260 miles. That's not too bad. It has done slightly better compared to, for example, the MG electric vehicles that I've tested, but still not great. I would have expected a little bit more, especially, as I said, from a EV bespoke platform. In conclusion, really, I did expect a little bit better, especially from the Atto 3. I think maybe my Maybe my um, expectations are definitely higher ever since I've tested the Vauxhall Astra E. Bear in mind that is on a ICE conversion, so an internal combustion engine conversion, and it was able to do 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour at pretty similar speeds and at a slightly lower temperature as well. Although it's an okay showing, it needs to be improved, I would say. You know, I'm sure that there's plenty of things that BYD can do to improve the efficiency a little bit more. Um, it'll be very, very interesting to see actually the BYD Dolphin or the BYD Seal. Now, those are a um, compact hatchback, but also there is a, a longer sedan um, or saloon type vehicle. I reckon those will do actually pretty well on the test. And bear in mind, they also use the Blade Cell and the third generation platform. So I think that is pretty much it. So if you enjoyed the video or you found it informative, please give it a like, dislike it if you didn't. Please have a look actually at my other range test videos. So things like the MG ZS EV long range, as well as that amazing Fox Astra E, which I have no idea how on earth it managed to achieve those efficiency stats. And I think that is pretty much it. So thank you for watching and talk to you later.